Hi everyone, Logan here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, I want to do a quick video about what I've been up to recently with the roof of the observatory. Um, so I'm standing in the observatory I had completed end of uh, 2020. One of the good things about 2020 was getting this observatory finished. I didn't actually build it, I have to admit that. I got um, some builders to build it and they they constructed it really really well but um, it is super solid and the roof is super solid so the roof is pretty heavy. So um, I had thought about whether or not I could automate the roof at the time when it was being constructed and a lot of the systems I'd seen involved garage door type openers with sort of chains pulling across from the side and things going outside the building and that worried me about the waterproofing etc. So um, we just went ahead and constructed it with just the wheels and to get around the weight of the roof I've been having to use a system of ropes and pulleys. Uh, so I can push the roof most of the way off um, but I do fall short by a bit, just over a metre because uh, where the camera is actually sitting at the moment filming out through the door is a little warm room that I had made. Now it, it doesn't get super cold here, it doesn't snow or anything but it can get down to about three degrees in the evening and with a bit of breeze blowing you know it can get uh, a bit, bit chilly so I thought well at least I can close the door, hide away there, work with the computer etc without the light coming from the computer and affecting the telescope as well. But because that warm room is there, I can't push it past the wall of the warm room. So then I have to go outside, hook up some more ropes and pulleys, and pull it the rest of the way off. The reason I have to do that is because A, the roof is heavy, B, um, the section slopes away a bit, so the roof is far too high for me to actually reach to, to push off. So I have to use this rope system. Unhook those, come and do the imaging, and at the end of the session, I've got another rope and pulley system which connects to the roof, and I have to hook over to here and uh, pull the roof closed. Works fine, um, but I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be able to just push a button and get the roof to roll off by itself? Well, I saw a video not that long ago by Glenn, aka Astro Bloke, over in, in England, and um, he had automated his roof, but he had used a uh, a gate um, motor for a, for a sliding uh, gate, like at a front gate, and had the track running down the side on the outside of the roof, along with the motor situated on the outside um, of the building, because they're designed to be outdoor. And I looked at it and thought, yeah, it works really well, I wonder if I can do something on the inside, um, but I it didn't have enough room to stand a motor up without hitting the roof. Then um, Joe from Joe's astrophoto.com uh, then did a video not long after showing that he had uh, automated his roof and he had now put the motor sideways. He ran it down the inside, um, on, on the, well he ran it on the, down the side of the roof but on the inside this time and, uh, and as I said sideways and I thought well I can actually fit one in sideways but I wasn't so sure whether I could actually run it down the side of the roof or not because I was concerned about the roof racking a bit as it went down. My track is a u-shaped track and the um, wheels can get a bit stuck at times so um, I was just a bit worried about the motor sort of pushing one side with the other side not moving quite and then next thing the whole thing jams sideways and I'm in a lot of trouble. Then I had a look at the way the roof was constructed and I realized there's a beam running right down the middle maybe I can run the track down there so um, with the help of my son who's now taller than me which was great for reaching a lot of the um, high points and, and screwing in the track for me. Um, we have uh, automated the roof, so I'll show you what we've done. So running down this uh, centre beam is the track that normally would be attached to a gate and uh, you can see the sort of teeth on it there which are designed to fit into the uh, sort of cog thing on the, on the actual motor, so I don't know all the technical terms uh, for it, but uh, so my son and I just um, screw these on here, try to keep them as straight as possible, and then it disappears down to where the motor is situated. So this is the inside of the warm room, and this is where the motor is positioned on the wall, uh, sideways and bolted on so it's nice and secure. I did have to cut a hole in the ceiling of the warm room but I um, probably can fill most of that in some way just to reduce some of the draft coming down. 
Now, obviously, if there's a power cut, you want to be able to pull the roof back, particularly if there's some clouds or rain coming. So that's where it's important to have access to this little area here where the key is. And uh, I'll just pop this up in here, turn it sideways, flick it down. That disengages the motor, uh, or the gears, I suppose. And then if I just come back here, I can just move the roof manually, or in this particular instance, I would be um, pushing it back to uh, cover up the rain or clouds arrive. So this is just a view looking in the space above the warm room between that and the roll-off roof. And you can see the motor there is turning and uh, the teeth are binding into the track there and just pushing the whole roof along. And then there's a magnet um, just at the end here which uh, triggers the motor to stop. And then pushing the button again, rolls back the other way. There's a uh, magnet down the other end and that also uh, triggers the motor to stop and tells uh, the motor that the roof is closed. So now, if I want to roll the roof off, push the button. It brings a smile to my face every time. And pushes it nicely beyond this wall, which I couldn't do before without using my ropes and pulleys. The other thing I discovered the second time I ran the roof, and I don't know if you noticed it there, was that the roof um, goes off at a certain speed and it slows down just before it gets to the end where the magnet triggers the uh, motor to stop turning and the roof stops moving. The first time I ran it, it um, shot down the other end and when it got to the magnet there was a sudden sort of stop. It was quite violent I thought. The motor attached to the wall uh, moved around a bit and I was a bit worried and the same at the other end. But then I discovered that uh, once you've done that the first time it learns where the start and the stop part are. So what happens is, it, uh, as it's approaching the end point, it slows right down and makes a, a much more gentle stop. So cool. A little bit noisy, wheels make a bit of noise, but that's okay. Uh, the squeal at the end is I've got some uh, rubber flashing there which is just to help it waterproof at the end so it makes, it makes a little bit of a squeal noise as that's hitting the wood but uh, otherwise, brilliant, love it. And yep, like Joe and uh, Glenn, it's hard not to want to just keep pushing the button and keep the roof to roll off and roll back again. You can stop it whenever you like. Yeah. At that point, if you want to, or a little bit further back, if you're shooting a target that doesn't require the roof to go all the way off, you can do that, and then uh, push the button again and close at the end of the session. Brilliant. And of course, if I'm feeling particularly lazy, I don't even have to leave the house. Just lean out the window, push the button, and... Uh, away it goes and then at the end of a session I can just lean out the window and push the button again let it close and go back to bed.